Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Superpower User. My name is Stanley, and today I want to talk about a little known feature called SMB Multi-Channel and what it can do for you and how you can link together multiple Ethernet ports to increase your bandwidth on your NAS and your PC. For decades now, link aggregation has existed in the business world, especially in the enterprise and large business settings. However, in the smaller business settings or you know, in the home setting, link aggregation hasn't been really applicable due to a number of factors. First of all, it requires expensive hardware to do all the processing to be able to aggregate multiple Ethernet ports together. Or uh, even if you do link aggregate multiple Ethernet ports together to show up as a single connection, you re it only works with multiple clients talking to that uh, to the server. In other words, if I have a single computer and I want to uh, plug all these Ethernet ports in and have all the data go across all the ports, it doesn't actually work like that. For example, if you have two one gig Ethernet ports plugged into your NAS and into your computer, uh, because it's only one client, it'll only use one of the Ethernet one gig lines. If you have two clients, however, you can fully saturate both lines. So. Um, link aggregation isn't actually the solution if you want to have a very, very fast connection from your desktop to a NAS, for example. Now, that's where SMB multi-channel comes in. So what is SMB multi-channel? Well, it's a feature that was released a few years back, first on Windows Server 2012, which uh, was part of SMB 3.0, which is a more automatic way of divvying up the data across multiple Ethernet channels and across multiple lines to a server. So it is a little bit more automatic and it actually works with one single client and one server. So basically with SMB multi-channel uh, on SMB 3.0, I can have a desktop computer connected either two or three or four different Ethernet ports run that through a switch, and then have multiple, multiple, multiple ports going into a NAS and fully saturate all the lines and, and have max out the connection across both the computer and the NAS. So I want to talk about how, I can, how you set that up on the QNAP NAS and the configurations required for that. So what I got here is the QNAP TVS A82 ST3, which is an 8-bay NAS on an Intel processor platform. Uh, I'm going to show you how to connect everything together and show you all the software configurations that you'll need to do, along with a couple benchmarks to prove that it works. So you can follow along with your own NAS um, or a QNAP NAS, and hopefully it'll work for you as well. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that it has multiple Ethernet ports. In this situation, I've got, or on this device, I've got two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports along with two 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. Of course, you'll need to have multiple cables, and you know, I've got here are two uh, Cat 6A cables. Cat 5E works just as fine um, if you're on 1 gigabit as well. So, all you need to do is to plug both cables in, right? And once you have both cables in, you need to make sure that these cables go into the switch. And I've got a switch right here, it's a QNAP switch, but any unmanaged switch will do just fine. You have to make sure that the switch is attached to a router, so something that gives out the DHCP addresses. And from there, on the computer side, you need to make sure that you have two cables coming from the switch going to the router, or sorry, going from the switch to the PC. So basically all the connections is, you know, you've got all the connections in here going to the switch and going from the switch to the PC. Of course, your router has its own separate connection going to the switch as well. That's how the IP addresses get distributed. And, that, and that's the, another thing to note is, uh, it, this really, really needs to be on a DHCP uh, traditional network rather than manual IP addresses. Basically, any router 
the issues out DHCP IP addresses will work. It just needs to be a little bit more dynamic so that it recognizes that multiple, you know, these multiple IP addresses belong to a device. Anyway, I've got the Ethernet ports plugged in. I'm gonna plug everything up and power it on. So be right back. All right, I've got the NAS rebooting right now. And the first thing we need to do is to go to uh, Google to Google and download Putty. It's a free SSH client that allows you to log into the NAS and make configuration changes. So uh, all you need to do is go to uh, search a Putty, release 0.71 is the latest version, and then download the 64-bit version. And of course, you know, you can save desktop and then, then you know, you could go through the installation. I've already got this installed, so we'll just pick up from there. So the first thing you do is you fire up Putty and it'll ask you what is the host IP number. And for me, the IP address is 192.168.1.25. That's what I've got my NAS. I know that for a fact. If you don't know what your IP address is, uh, you can go to uh, QFinder Pro if you got that installed. And then you can see what the IP address is on your NAS. So I've got that typed in. You know, you can just, once I've got that on, port 22 is fine. And log in and then okay for the first thing you need to do is to type in the username for your NAS in my case it's admin it hasn't changed and then the password that you usually use to log into your NAS with that you're now, you're now logged into your NAS you're SSH into the NAS so the first thing we need to do is to navigate to the SMB or the, uh, the SMB config file. So uh, it's located here. What we'll do is use the vi command uh, to be able to edit this file. So it's vi forward slash etc forward slash config slash SMB dot CONF. Enter. Now, whoops, here we go. Sorry. Now we're inside this configuration file. The next thing you need to do is to find the line that says server SMB or server multi channel support and that equals. So down here we've got, ah, right here. So as you can see here, it says server multi channel support, yes. Most likely on yours, it's gonna say no. So in order to edit from the no to the yes, you need to hit the letter I on the keyboard to, for insert. And then you can uh, edit this and hit either, and change it to yes. From here, just hit escape to stop typing. And then type in colon, uh, W for write, and then Q for quit. And then you can see down here, you have it typed out and then you just hit enter and then it's all written in there. Again, you can double check to see if it's written uh, by going back in there again to see if it has saved. Uh, and then just make sure that it says SMB multi-channel, yes. And then if you wanna quit is colon Q for quit. All right, now that we've got that written in there, uh, the next thing we need to do is to c initiate the restart command for SMB. So etc init.d smb.sh space restart. And then it'll restart SMB services. After that, uh, you really should, it should just start working basically. And, uh, or alternatively, you can restart the NAS and restart your computer. Make sure that both the NAS and the computer are receiving a brand new IP address. And that way, 
uh, everything's fresh. So once it says starting service, done. Okay, there you go. It's completely done. We can exit out. Are you, are you sure you want to close the session? Why not? So in terms of configuration, that's all you need to do. Uh, really from here on out, you just need to uh, basically make sure that your connections. So on the NAS, this is logged into the NAS. Um, virtual, where, where's virtual switch? Okay. All you need to do is to make sure that the physical adapters, in this case, I've got virtual switch, uh, this adapter, physical adapter 1.25 along with 1.26, both are receiving an IP address. So I know both are getting an IP address and it's all, you know, everything's good to go. On the computer side, of course, uh, I've got both ethernet ports already plugged in. So eth this ethernet and this ethernet 192.1.3, 192, 192.168.1.2. So I've got both of these active now. And uh, again, you can restart your computer, restart the NAS to make sure that they get the fresh IP address. But basically after this, you're completely done. So um, in terms, and then all you, if you wanna do a speed test, this is connected on the 10 gigabit. So I got two 10 gigabit ethernet ports connected to 10 gigabit ethernet ports through a 10 gigabit switch. And in this situation, you can see I've got uh, a file that, you know, with a lot of video files copying over and it's, the speeds are good for 1.2 uh, plus gigabits per, gigabytes per second. Uh, this is really limited to the bandwidth of the NAS and or the SSD on my computer. And as you can see, I'm really pulling five to six gigabits per second on each ethernet. So really um, out of 10 gigabits, I'm probably not getting it the most I can. I'm not pulling full 20 gigabits just because of, again, of the bottleneck of um, some of the hardware. But if I were to have one gigabit, and then here's another test. This is just one gigabit ethernet. So I've got two one gigabit ethernets connected on the NAS. And then again, con two connected on the PC. And you can see here on a copy paste, I'm pulling uh, about 225 megabytes per second, which is approximately um, full gigabit, a uh, full two gigabits per second, saturating both ethernet lines. So as you can see, the SMB multi-channel works very well, very stable, and you get very good performance and scaling out of it. Um, it basically maxed out the gigabit ethernet connections and did pretty well on you know, 10 gigabit ethernet. But of course, I was bottlenecked with the drives and the PC on that. So really, all you really needed to do was to make a little change in the config file, the SMB config file from no to yes, and then make sure all the ethernet cables are connected correctly into the switch. And the last thing is to have a router on your network issuing out automatic DHCP IP addresses. Uh, in the past, you had to, there was talk about, you had to be on different subnets and you know manual IP addresses, different whatever. Basically, it seems like they've worked out the kinks and it just works now. Uh, as I said previously, SMB multi-channel originally came out in Windows 2012, uh, Server 2012, you know, and works natively with uh, 2012, 2016, 2019. And for example, if you have a Thekus uh, NAS running Windows Server, basically you just plug it in and it, it, it talks over all the Ethernet ports and it just works. However, it's important. Well, there's one caveat I, I wanted to bring up. One, one thing you should know is that the QNAP NAS, uh, the way it implements SMB is through Samba instead of CIFS. And Samba, while it does, again, you can see it had the SMB multi-channel in there, it's currently classified as an experimental feature uh, as of 
version 4.40. And the reason why they've classified it as experimental is because, of course, it's a new feature and it, they think that it needs you know, more testing and that they recommend it, you guys not to implement it in a production or a mission critical network. So what's unsaid is basically, if you have very, very critical data or you're worried about corruption, uh, you might want to pass on SMB multi-channel. For me, I've been running it for a year, year and a half, absolutely no problems. Uh, I've lost power, I've you know, shut down my NAS, unplugged the cables, I've never had any issues. It kind of just, you, know, you plug everything back in and it just works again and I've never had any file corruption issues. But it is, you know, again, full disclosure, SMB multi-channel is listed as experimental in Samba 4.40. Well, I hope this was useful for you guys because I know when I was looking this information up, uh, information was kind of spotty and I couldn't really figure out what was the file I needed to edit, where, you know, where to look it up, all the little config file differences. Um, and basically, I thought that perhaps a video would be much more easy for people to find, you know, help understand what is needed to be done in order to enable this feature. So you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and then perhaps consider subscribing for future videos or tutorials if you know, this was interesting to you. And then maybe in the section down below, comment on your successes on uh, enabling SMB multi-channel. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one.